It's the 8th of April, 2015, and this is your host, Paul Carr, with burst number five. What about those fast radio bursts? Now, there's been a lot of tension in the popular press of late, thanks to a paper that came out recently by three authors, Michael Hipka, Wilfried Domenko, and John Learned. It's called Discrete Steps and Dispersion Measures of Fast Radio Bursts. Sounds innocent enough. And it is actually a very sober, careful paper. What these three scientists did is they looked at something called the dispersion measure in fast radio bursts. Now, a fast radio burst is something that is apparently an astronomical phenomenon. It, it's a very brief pulse of energy measured at a radio telescope. The dispersion measure measures how far apart in time the arrival is of different frequencies, different wavelengths, if you will, in that signal. The dispersion measure, given some reasonable assumptions, relates to the distance of the burst. So you would expect that if these bursts were some normal astrophysical phenomenon, that they would have a random set of dispersion measures depending on the distance to whatever these astrophysical objects are. What they found, though, was a very interesting clustering of the different bursts, and there are only 11 of them so far, around multiples of 187.5. Now, that 187.5 is centimeters to the minus three parsecs, Uh, You don't have to worry about why it's that. But essentially, if you multiply that by the density of electrons per cubic centimeter, you get a distance in parsecs. And those data cluster tightly around multiples of 187.5, specifically multiples 2, 3, 4, 5, six and nine times that value. There's nothing in between. They should be just more or less scattered along that line. They're right on it. In fact, three of the bursts are very closely multiples of four times that value. Now, since that doesn't make sense in terms of distances, What we're seeing here is either a new type of astrophysical phenomenon or a big, possibly quite embarrassing error in the way the data is being taken. Or, here's another thing, a signal of some kind originating not cosmological distances, potentially, but much closer, perhaps within our own galaxy or maybe right here on Earth. It could be a man-made signal. In fact, there is some evidence that it is a man-made signal. So, while it's very premature to say that these bursts are a signal from ET, in fact, it's kind of puzzling what sort of signal this would be, it certainly doesn't appear to be random astrophysical phenomena, unless it's a very new type of class of astrophysical phenomena. In fact, a recent investigation by Petrov et al. tried to catch a burst in the act. They came, they they did, they successfully caught a burst happening uh, immediately after it happened, and tried to get a lot of different telescopes and onto that particular location to see if there was any counterpart either optical or some other part of the electromagnetic spectrum, that should have been arriving at the same time if it was, in fact, a very high-energy event off deep in the cosmos. They found nothing. So what does that mean? Well, we don't know what it means. It could mean a lot of different things. But it we can't completely rule out that it is, in fact, some kind of ET beacon. It could be. In fact, it looks a bit like some of the beacons that certain people have proposed that would exist. uh, They would be very short pulses 
over a wider frequency rather than this sort of constant um, narrow band signal that we talked about in the episode on the wow signal last year. So this doesn't look like the wow signal. It has a very different characteristic. It's a very short millisecond duration pulses, but they do have some very odd characteristics. Now, what we really need is more bursts detected by a wider diversity of radio telescopes around the world. 10 of the 11 bursts have been detected at the Parks Radio Observatory. Only one has been detected at Arecibo and none anywhere else that we know of. So what we need is more bursts, see if they fit into the same pattern. If they do, then there are a lot of possibilities before we get to ET. One is that we're just misinterpreting human-made interference, although nobody can figure out why that interference would be in the radio astronomy band and have this kind of pattern. But then again, we, we could surprise ourselves. Or it may be some strange phenomenon in the Earth's magnetosphere. Again, like the long delay echoes, we don't really know. Some of those long delay echoes could be result of exactly the right conditions in the magnetosphere, exactly the right time when a signal's being sent. We we simply don't have a uh, a good handle on what causes all the long delay echoes, and we don't have a good handle on what causes the fast radio bursts. There is a related phenomenon, peritons. Peritons do appear to be generated close to Earth. Why? Well, because the radio telescope detects them in more than one field of view. So it's not something very far in the cosmos. It's something nearby, possibly in the atmosphere or, or in space. We don't know. The peritons may be a clue to what's going on with the fast radio bursts. Now, here I am talking by myself, not a radio astronomer. Clearly, I need to get some radio astronomers on to talk about this, and I will. This is just to bring give you a quick update on what's going on. I would ignore the hype. If you can, get a hold of the paper. I'll have a link to it in the show notes. It's available on the Cornell Archive. It's called Discrete Steps in Dispersion Measures of Fast Radio Bursts. And you should read that. It The math is not very heavy in there. There's a lot of numbers, but not a whole lot of math. And... You can, it's a very short paper. It's only about uh, three pages. The, I'm trying to get Hipka, uh, Domenko, or Learn It On, and I'm also trying to get other people to come on and explain fast radio bursts and paratons. So stay tuned. The wow signal will be all over this story as long as it's a story. This is Paul Carr. This has been burst number five.